the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And, and I do appreciate the opportunity to talk uh, about this uh, particular issue. As I said in my question, Madam Speaker, uh, there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever in my mind. Uh, you know, in discussions that I've had with uh, many of my colleagues within the Liberal Caucus, I can assure you, and I don't believe it's just Liberal members of Parliament, I do believe that it is very much uh, MPs on all sides, belonging to all political parties, uh, can share with you endless examples in terms of the good work and the deeds that chari charities do, uh, not only here in Canada, Madam Speaker, but around the world. In fact, I suspect if we were to take a look at it, what you would find is that Canadians on a per capita basis has got to be one of the most generous uh, uh, grouping of, of people in the world, uh, Madam Speaker. I really believe that. And I'd like to be able to, to cite a couple of examples in going through this. But before I do that, to, to recognize that the bill uh, to uh, S216 and, and thank the Senator for the fine work uh, that she has done in, in ensuring that it comes for debate inside this uh, chamber. Um, but what we're debating today is in fact, in good part, being discussed in one of our standing committees. The Prime Minister and the, and the government recognized a while back that we wanted to make some modifications, believing that when you think of the charitable uh, legislation that is in place, our Revenue Canada, or our income tax, we all know that it is a fairly comprehensive system of taxation that we have. In the need for modifications in certain areas has been well demonstrated. And, you know, during the pandemic, uh, the Prime Minister in particular, but uh, other members of this, uh, of this chamber, have talked about what can we learn from the pandemic so that we can continue to build a better system, uh, Madam Speaker. And one of the things that have come out of that, I believe, is the need to look at ways in which we can enable more power to our charitable organizations. And today, Bill C-19, the Budget Implementation Bill, happens to be in a committee, which provides opposition. In fact, all members through House leadership teams and their colleagues can be able to contribute to the, to the debate on how it is that we can make some changes uh, to the legislation that will better enable charities going forward, uh, Madam Speaker. So there is an opportunity for us that's been made available because of the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister, as the Minister of Finance bringing forward uh, a budget document through the budget uh, implementation of legislation. So I would encourage members of all political stripes, as we have seen in the past and will no doubt continue to see into the future, the government being open to changes and modifications to improve legislation. In fact, I understand that we do have some charitable organizations that is having that dialogue now to see if, in fact, there's ways in which we can, we can improve it. When I think of charities, one of the ones that I wanted to, to highlight is the issue of Ukraine. When Russia invaded Ukraine, the reaction around the world was fairly profound in the sense that Ukrainian solidarity, if I can put it that way, Madam Speaker, that went well beyond the borders of Ukraine. In fact, if you take a look at Canada, where the population of Ukrainian heritage estimated at over 1.3 million people, that it captured the imagination of people from coast to coast to coast, even those that are not of Ukrainian heritage, in terms of what can we do as a community here in Canada to support our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, the war heroes in Ukraine. We have organizations such as the Canadian uh, Ukrainian Congress who has charitable tax uh, receipts. We have organizations like Red Cross Canada, charitable tax receipts. 
Canadians turned to those organizations by the thousands and contributed millions of dollars, uh, Madam Speaker. Those charitable organizations are providing humanitarian aid to Ukraine. In fact, the federal government provided matching funds for the Red Cross organization. And I think initially the cap was like $10 million of matching donations, which was quickly used up. And then we increased the cap to $30 million. And I believe it hit that also, Madam Speaker. It demonstrates a couple of things for me personally, as I know it does for my colleagues. Number one, that the fine work that our charitable organizations are doing in this particular case to be there for Ukrainian people in Ukraine and those bordering countries where uh, Ukrainians are, are fleeing for a safe haven has absolutely been astounding. Arguably second to very few others, uh, Madam Speaker. And that's one of the reasons why Canadians have opened their hearts and their wallets and purses. And it's done through charitable organizations. Now, I understand what the debate is today. Well, what about those that want to be able to, to contribute? Again, stay with Ukraine. You know, um, there's a, a new organization that was established in Manitoba. It's the Manitoba Operation Blue Skies. My understanding is it's 80 volunteers that have all come to the table in the last number of weeks, Madam Speaker. And they're saying that we want to be able to participate. We want to be able to help the people that are looking uh, to relocate and possibly come to Canada, at least for the short term and possibly even the long term. They don't have a charitable tax uh, number. So they go to um, the Canadian Ukrainian Institute of Provista, an organization that has been there for many years and has done a great deal of support in many different ways, uh, Madam Speaker. And through the cooperation and, and support of that organization, indirectly, and there is a high sense of accountability, that they're able to support the Manitoba Operations Blue Skies in some of their initiatives, uh, Madam Speaker. And I don't think that there is anyone inside this chamber would, that wouldn't recognize the value of that, uh, Madam Speaker. The idea that there are organizations that are out there, and I use Ukraine as an example, and that's just it, is one example of no doubt many that are out there. There's a lot of people that want to do good work, whether it's here in Canada or internationally. And they've demonstrated that both financially and by providing resources. The Canadian government does have a role to play. And we recognize that role. And that is why it was so important that we incorporate it, at least the idea that we're talking about today, in the budget implementation bill, which will pass, Madam Speaker with the support of members on, on both from opposition members and from government members, the budget implementation bill, I believe, will in fact pass. We will see some changes. And the reason why we're going to see changes, Madam Speaker, is because members on all sides of this House recognize the true value and contributions that charitable organizations that are rooted here in Canada and those that want to support those uh, organizations want to be able to continue to play a vital, critical role, not only here in Canada, but throughout the world. Thank you, Madam Speaker.